So the Bible says that Jacob grabbed God. Because that's what happens. The same, it suffered violence. The desperate need of Jacob, the desperate need for identity, collided with God. He couldn't have it any other way. He instinctively grabbed God. And he said, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. I'm not going to let you go. You cannot get away from me until you make my life valid and my identity right and my soul connected and meaning something. Isn't it strange that God took his pinky finger to break loose of Jacob? He tapped him in the strongest socket in your body, the strongest joint, the hip joint. And it dislocated. Two strange things there. There's no pain like that. That's off the pain chart. But Jacob won't have it. He's not letting go. So the question is, what in the world made it impossible for God to get lose the grip of Jacob, to break it? He said, let me go. And Jacob said, no, I won't, not until you bless me. I've been a liar and a cheat and a con artist and an illegitimate individual. And I'm not going to leave here without an identity and without a blessing. And so, how is it possible that the God who could use his pinky finger and dislocate the most powerful joint can't loosen the grip and get away? Because the one thing that God cannot resist is the sincere cry of one of his children. He can't resist it. That's why the man said, this poor man cried to the Lord and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. The first thing God's going to do in this audience is get rid of your fear of changing your life. And then you're going to get up out of your seat. You're going to walk down here. And then you're going to get rid of your troubles. And you're going to know that you're a child of God. And you're going to wake up to the life you were born to live. Bow your head, close your eyes, everyone please. Nobody move. Everybody listening to the man of God. The official rules of the next three minutes are these. Number one, you are not to care how far it is from where you're seated to the front of this stage. The distance is irrelevant. You need to understand that it doesn't matter now. Second, don't throw at me your excuse that you believe in the Bible and you believe in God. There is no greater double standard in all the universe than a person who espouses a belief in something that still has a life that's full of pain and misery. Because the Christian miracle is about the life. It's about the life. It's about the transformation from dark to light, from pain to hope, from addiction to freedom. This is the truth that breaks chains, takes away suicide and despair and anger. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you will let the man of God pray for you, for God to give you a supernatural identity so that no one will ever doubt and you will never feel inferior to any person on earth. You will know that you are a son and a daughter of God and you are royalty and you're the son and daughter of a king. Mario, I need a new life. I have a deep cry in my life for God. I need that touch that Jacob got. And what happened? When the sun was rising, God couldn't let go of the cry of Jacob. The Bible tells us that God said, what is your name? He said, Jacob, which means con artist. And then... God said, your name is no longer Jacob, but is now Israel, because you have prevailed with God and man. Why was it that his reward was identity? Why is it that America's number one crisis is identity? 
And your number one need is to say yes to God, to say yes to Christ, to say it as you've never said it before in your life. Mario, pray for me that God will reveal to me my true identity, who I am. Because the minute you know your royalty, you start, stop acting like garbage. You're no longer at the whim of some man who wants your body. You're no longer at the whim of a needle or a pill or a drug. You suddenly become somebody with skills to say no because it's beneath me and it's beneath my God. And the Spirit of God's working on you. Mario, the message you preach, that's for somebody else. If that's true, why is it beating you up? If what I just preached is for someone else, why is it hitting you between the eyes? And suddenly you know that's what I've needed. I've needed what that man is talking about. I need it, and I need it now. If you let me pray for you, put your hand in the air right now for a new life. I'm going to turn to Christ. I'm going to have a new life. I want everyone that raised your hand to stand on your feet right now. Get up on your feet. Mar, I need God to save my life. Transform me. Get up. Get up. Get up out of your seat. All around this circle, wherever you are, stand and say, I'm going to get my identity from Christ. And I'm going to be forgiven of all my sins and made into a new creation. I want all of you who are standing, starting with those of you at the top ring, find the nearest aisle and start walking down here right now. Start walking toward me. Find the nearest aisle and come walking toward me right now. Start right down here. Come on. Now everyone else, start coming. Everyone else, come to Christ. Come. He's waiting for you. He's going to forgive you. Don't hold back. Do not hesitate. Say yes. All the way over here. Everybody keep coming. Say, Mario, I'm making my decision right now. Get up out of your seat. Join this group. They're going to have a story to tell. They're going to have a miracle to describe. Fill in across the front right here. I think the church ought to make a little more noise than this. Look at what's going on. They're coming. They're coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to announce to you that you're watching an unprecedented miracle of souls being saved. And they're still coming. Keep coming. Yes, look at another wave, they're still coming. They're coming from the overflow room, they're coming. Come in closer, please. I thought they were telling me to come in closer. Come in closer right here. You are not you are not a number. You are a person of great worth to God. Don't see yourself as a statistic. You are absolutely priceless to God. You know, it is a beautiful thing when it takes this long 
for everyone that wants Jesus to get to the front. This is wonderful. Keep coming. Let's make sure. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Now, we're going to put a code up on the screens. And I want you to get your phone out. And I want to tell you why. If you don't have it with you, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But if you do, there'll be a code on this screen and this one. A QR code. And I want you to download it to your phone right now. For those of you that don't have a phone, I want our workers to wait in. This is going to be fun right here. And they're going to talk to you for just a second. Some of them are already here. Oh, look. I thought that our workers had already come down. They didn't. All right. No problem. Would all of you please listen to me? Let's not break this sacred and powerful moment. Put your hand over your heart. When it comes to the identity, there is nothing more unshakable than the grace of God. When you turn your life over to God, He's going to hunt you down and take care of you. You try to get away, you're in for the fight of your life. God will never let you go. He's not going to let you go. You say, Mark, but, but I can sin and fall, yeah, but he'll slap you upside your head. You have no idea how much God loves you. And he will never fail you or let you go. Never. Now, I want all of you that are here to get ready to say a prayer out loud and to mean it with all your heart. That prayer that you're going to pray was designed through a man of God, Paul the Apostle, who took the simplest words and made them come alive so that you would be able to know Christ. Close your eyes and say this. Before you say it, believe it. Before you say a word, believe it. Believe it, believe it, believe it, and commit. We sang tonight, I have decided to follow Jesus. That is your life's prayer. That's you. So say this now. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross. Jesus, when you died for me, you proved that you loved me. On the third day, you rose from the grave and proved that you could change me, that you had the resurrection power. I need love, I need cleansing, and I need power. And I need to know who I am. And you're the only one that can tell me. And when you tell me who I am, Nobody can ever take it away. Thank you, Jesus, for washing away my sin. I repent of my sin. And I thank you, God, for the miracle you've done in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to leave this code up for a while. So you, when you get back to your phone, you can still do it. But we'll get your information. But here's what I want to do. I need everybody to stand up. And I want you to look at the harvest of souls. They tell us there's a harvest of souls right here. From, and we give God all the glory. Now stay on your feet and point toward these people. Point toward them. Now we're going to pray over you. Today, alcohol is no longer an appetite. Drugs are no longer an appetite. Starting right now, you are delivered from every habit, every fear, every demonic power. Every curse in your family is broken. 
by the cross and the blood of Jesus. You are not going to be another casualty in the American nightmare. You're going to be a soldier in the army of God. You're going to walk in the light as he is in the light. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for them. Point at them. I pray for them. I pray that their hearts and minds and their spirits will be transformed tonight. Made alive. Made into a new creation. They will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they will know God. And they will walk with Christ every day of their life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to ask all of you to turn and face the direction from which you came. If you came from here, look that way. If you came from here, look that way. Every one of you turn this way. We're going to give an explosive congratulation to them in a moment, not yet. So I want you to march back to where you were seated because your seat is being saved for you by angels. And I want you to head back to your seats. And those of you that are on the periphery, turn right around here that are in this aisle, turn right around so they can march right down there right now. Let, let's open it up for them. Is there an aisle there or am I creating one? I'm sorry, it's over here. I'll get my geography right. Start heading out, heading down, right here, and right here. Turn around, start heading down. Welcome, welcome them.